All right. Good morning. This morning we are uh, we are joined. We are taught. We are led. We are having wisdom and nuggets shared into our brains by none other than Mr. Hans Hilton. Uh, Hans is the leader of all of our district managers in personal sales. In fact, it's possible that Hans is the number one district manager in personal sales in all the company, uh, at least in the top five for definitely for sure. Hans, anybody, anybody, any DMs sold more than you that you can think of? Brian Carter? Brian, Brian Carter is the, the one that would come to mind as potential. Yeah, he's a potential because he still does uh, does a decent amount of personal sales. So anyway, well, with that said, Hans is going to talk about an extremely valuable topic in making money selling Cutco and making customers happy, and that is selling sets and dropping down. So Mr. Hans Hilton, it is all you. So the, the first thing uh, I always like to do when talking about uh, uh, selling sets is uh, uh, in the chat box, go ahead and let me know what you think a big order is. It was a big order. I like it. Cutco Kitchen. Marissa says complete set. Lucas says ultimate set with accomplished chef. All CPOs, good CPO. And all right, guys, what do you guys think is a small order? Let me know what you think is a small order. I got cutting board. I got cutting board. I got one knife. What you got for us, Marissa? What's a small order? Anything lower than a homie? So yeah, the, the first thing uh, towards selling sets, I believe is the mentality of what is a small order and what is a big order. Um, I, th I think most of you guys have a solid concept of like what a big order is, like a Cutco Kitchen or a, um, a combo order. Um, but, you know, in my mindset, like a small order was like a homemaker set. That was like your basic set. That's like the minimum number of tools that every kitchen needs. So in my mindset, that was like when they were getting a small order was when they were getting just the basics. And then when they were getting more than the basics, that was more of a, of a bigger order. Um, so uh, the first thing I have for you guys, uh, as far as selling sets is setting the right expectation for the customer, uh, setting the right expectation for the customer. So what I like to start out uh, when I was sort of doing my introduction to the appointment uh, is saying, hey, thank you so much for taking the time to see me. Um, like I said on the phone, you don't have to get anything at all. Uh, however, I'm going to warn you, most people I show Cutco to really fall in love with Cutco. Most people I show Cutco to really fall in love with Cutco. And if you're really nice to me, I'll let you get some today. Now, I know you probably don't have thousands of dollars under your pillow waiting for the knife guy to show up on Zoom so you can get a knife or two. I know you probably don't have thousands of dollars under your pillow waiting for the knife guy to show up on Zoom so you can buy a knife or two. But I happen to be in a contest. So if you see something you like for yourself for a gift, and by the way, I promise we'll both agree this is one of the best gifts you can give or get. Um, because of the contest I'm in, you'll get a better deal now than you will at any other time. So you'll save a bunch of money. So I'm going to drop this in the chat box for you guys so you can uh, copy and paste it out of the chat box. Boom, there you go. So setting setting up the right expectations, because obviously from that introduction, um, one, it's it's or setting a real strong expectation that I'm expecting them to fall in love with Cutco, expecting them to want Cutco. And uh, in a playful way saying, I'll let you buy some today. Um, and then two, it's it's setting up the expectation that like Cutco is going to be $500 to $1,000 per knife. Like setting a, a really high expectation for how much Cutco is going to cost. Uh, second, uh, asking quality questions throughout the presentation. So, of course, you want to create a conversation with the customer, not a presentation for the customer. You don't want the customer to feel so much like you're presenting to them, as in you're having a two-sided conversation with them where they're participating as much as you're participating. Um, now, one question that I like to ask is, um, before going into uh uh, the features and benefits of Cutco and the guarantee. So before kind of selling them on Cutco is asking them, hey, for one knife to cost a thousand dollars, 
So for one knife to cost a thousand dollars, what would it need to have to justify that cost? And, you know, c customers are listing things off. They're like, oh my God, it would have to be the smoothest cut that I've ever experienced. And, uh, the, you know, it would have to cook for me. Uh, if I broke it, it would have to be replaced for free. And that they're naming all of these things that we're basically going to exactly tell them is Cutco. So they're basically justifying in their own mind uh, Cutco costing $1,000 per knife and that it would be okay to spend that kind of money uh, per knife. Uh, and of course, you guys know during names and uses, uh, after each knife, just asking them, what would you use this knife for most in your kitchen? And giving them the opportunity to give feedback on each item, each tool in the set, um, so that they're participating in the conversation. You'll never get at the end that I wouldn't use each tool in the set if they've just told you what they would use each tool in the set for. So you completely eliminate that objection. Uh, the more they talk, the more they participate, the more it's a conversation and not a presentation, the more they're closing themselves on why they should purchase Cutco. And of course, key phrases like, you're going to love your trimmer for blank. Uh, assumptive language, as if in my mind, they've already made the decision that they're going to purchase Cutco. Like my mind says, of course, you're going to want to have Cutco in your kitchen. So you're going to love your spatula spreader when you're making sandwiches for your kids. It's, oh my gosh, you're just going to spread peanut butter. So having, having the right language as you go through the presentation. So starting big and ending big. So um, I always like to share uh, this story because you know, speaking about what I had you guys do, the exercise of what's a small order versus a big order. Um, I, I went to see a customer who asked me if she could buy a wedding set um, for her son who was getting married. And uh, so went out and she she owned an ultimate set. So I went out and, and sharpened her ultimate set for her, provided really great service, didn't talk anything about uh, the wedding set until I was done servicing. Uh, anytime you can provide service first, um, you always want to do so. Um, and then when we were done, um, we started talking about the wedding gift. Um, I pointed at her ultimate set and I was like, Hey, did you want to get his the same colors as yours? Or did you want to get him the white? And, um, she looked over at her ultimate set. She looked back over at me and she's like, I probably should just get him the whole set, huh? And I was like, yeah, it's a, it's a better value. It's a better deal to just start off with the whole set. It's what most of our customers end up upgrading to later anyways, uh, just like you did. And uh, yeah, it would just makes sense to start them off with everything. She's like, all right, yeah, let's get his. Let's get in the same color as mine. And uh, I was like, all right, sweet. And so then uh, uh, I was like, hey, you, you probably want him to have uh, all of your favorite gadgets too, like the peeler and the ice cream scoop. And, uh, and she's like, oh, of course. Yeah, let's add those onto the order. And uh, I was like, yeah, does, does your son, uh, does he like to barbecue? She's like, oh, he loves the barbecue. Oh, my, let me show you our barbecue tools. Oh, yeah, let's add those onto the set. And um, at the time, the ultimate set only fit table knives. It didn't have big enough slots for the steak knives. And her son was like six foot seven. And uh, I was like, you know what? He's, he's not going to like those table knives. Let me show you what he's going to like. And I put a steak knife in her hand. And she's like, oh, yeah, this, this is the answer right here. Let's add 12 of those uh, to the order. And so we just kept going through and I was like, does your son like to do this? Does your son like to do that? And every time she's like, oh yeah, let's include those. And uh, it ended up being from my memory about a 4,300 CPO wedding gift order for her only son. Um, whereas honestly, if I was new, I would have sold her a Homemaker Plus 8 for him. I would have been super fired up for the order. I would have been like, that's the easiest Homemaker I've ever sold in my life. But there was so much more potential there just from having the right mindset of, you know, what makes sense for her. You know, who was most fired up about that order was her. It's her only son getting married. She got to just outfit his whole kitchen with Cutco. He was super fired up because he got like almost everything in his kitchen Cutco, which is what he had grown up with anyways. Um, so it was a win, win, win. Of course, I was super fired up uh, walking out with a $4,300 order, but it was from having that right closing big mentality 
And how every customer I've run into that has, the more Cutco they have, the more they're dancing about how awesome Cutco is. Like people with a few pieces, they're like, yeah, Cutco's cool. It's good. I like it. It works. But man, when somebody's got an ultimate set and a flatware set, uh, it, man, the, especially when we run into them, they're like, oh my gosh, my Cutco, it's so awesome. I have like everything. I've got the complete set of knives. I've got the flatware. I just said, they're walking up to customers unprovoked, like, oh my gosh. Oh, do you guys have Cutco? Oh my gosh, you need to get Cutco. We've had Cutco for 15 years. It's so odd. And they're like closing other customers at the booth for us uh, unprovoked because of how fired up they are about their Cutco. So the more Cutco someone has, absolutely the more fired up and excited they are about Cutco. So help them get as much Cutco uh, as you can. You're doing it as a great service to them. Um, all right. Uh, so dropping down uh, thinking sets, dropping down thinking sets. Um, so this, this, uh, this was something that really kind of like resonated with me when dropping down is breaking up the tools into daily knives, weekly knives, and monthly knives. Daily knives, weekly knives, and monthly knives. Uh, so your daily knives in the basic set, paring knife, trimmer, spatula spreader, petite carver. Paring knife, trimmer, spatula, spreader, petite carver. Those are knives that almost no matter what you're doing in a kitchen are going to get used just about every single day. Cutting up fruits, cutting up vegetables, cutting up meats. Uh, those are going to get daily use, even in houses where people don't cook too much. Uh, your weekly knives, uh, petite chef knife, turning fork, and slicer. Petite chef knife, turning fork, and slicer are your weekly knives. Going to get used just about every week, just about every house. Uh, and then your monthly knives for a lot of households are your butcher knife and your carving set. Butcher knife and carving set can they probably get used once a month, at least in, in every household. Um, so when you're dropping down, an easy concept to have is, of course, the homemaker set has your daily knives, your weekly knives, and your monthly knives. So when they get the basic set, they get everything that's going to cover them for the full month. Uh, your galley set has your daily knives and your weekly knives. So when you're dropping down from a basic set to a galley set, hey, Mrs. Jones, let me show you a set that I think would be perfect for you. Uh, all we take out is the ones you're not gonna use as often, your, your monthly knives, the butcher knife and the carving set. We give you all of your daily tools and all of your weekly tools. Uh, so using that as a tool to drop down to the galley set. Uh, and then dropping down to the starter set, I always, you know, we, we, we show them, uh, four different starter sets, but I always like to come with like a recommendation for which one would make the most sense for them. So you guys can probably guess from the four daily knives we're promoting, which set that is, that is the studio set. So I would show them all the starter sets and I'd say, hey, can I make a recommendation? Uh, your studio set there, that's got all of your daily knives in it. That's a perfect set to get started. So you've got everything you'd use on a daily basis. Uh, and you can always upgrade to the basic set later to get the weekly and monthly tools. Um, so what do you think? So making a recommendation on a specific set for them instead of just saying, which do you like the best? Um, and then of course, uh, dropping down from that, you can break up the daily knives into a buy three, get one free. And boom, you got buy three, get one free on all of your daily knives. Um, so thinking, uh, thinking of the tools, in terms of sets, your daily knife set, your weekly knife set, your monthly knife set. <clears throat> and then uh, something I always love to do is using their objection as the reason the galley set would make sense for them. Using their specific objection for why the galley set would be the perfect set for them. So obvious ones, too much money. So Ms. Jones, let me show you the perfect set for people who feel the homemakers too much money. It's called our galley set. Still has all your daily and weekly tools in it, but instead of being fourteen nineteen, it's only whatever the galley set is. Um, and then uh, too many knives, obvious. And Miss Jones, let me show you the set that's perfect for people who feel like the homemakers just too many knives. It's called our galley set. Takes out the knives you're not going to use nearly as often. Gives you the knives you're going to use uh, on a daily and weekly basis. Um, now, some ones that are not as obvious, 
Um, so my, my favorite one was I had a customer tell me, uh, I'm not getting a, a homemaker from you today because I just don't cook. And I was like, oh, sweet. I actually have the perfect set for people that don't cook. Uh, let me show it to you. It's called our galley set. So obviously, Mrs. Jones, even people that don't cook, they're not eating their food like this big. They're still cutting it into smaller pieces. So these are just the tools that are going to get used uh, on a daily and weekly basis, whether you cook or not, just to cut your food up into smaller pieces to fit in your mouth. And uh, it's only this much. She bought a galley set. After her objection was, I'm not getting a homemaker because I just don't cook. So turning their objection into a reason why the next set makes perfect sense for them uh, is a great tool for uh, dropping down. All right, and then understanding human psychology. Understanding human psychology. So what I mean by that is people don't like to shop alone. Most people, when they go to the mall, they bring a friend with them. Most people, when they purchase something, they ask a friend for their opinion. Uh, it's because we, we don't like to be wrong. We want somebody to tell us we're right. We want somebody to tell us, my butt looks great in those jeans. And I'm like, great, I will take all four colors. We want somebody to tell us it's the right fit of a dress for us. We want someone to tell us we should spend our money on that. We're not going to regret it. It makes sense for us. So thinking of ourselves as assistant shoppers to the customers. So we're there to reassure them that they're making a good decision and that they're not going to regret purchasing Cutco. Uh, so uh, I like to call this like the reassurance close. The reassurance close. So Eileen, I know you're going to love Cutco. Um, I can definitely tell from our conversations you're going to use it. Um, I can tell you like it. And you know what, Eileen? You deserve to have Cutco in your kitchen. But I can tell you're just a little bit hesitant. So can I make a recommendation? Here, here's what I would recommend. Um, if, the, if it makes sense, if the deposit feels comfortable in your budget, put the deposit down on your set today. We're going to ship everything to you, Eileen. So you and your husband can use it in your kitchen together for 15 days. Make sure you absolutely love it. And you know what, Eileen? If you don't absolutely love it, you don't absolutely feel it's worth the investment at, for every dollar that you spend on Cutco, we're going to take it back and we're going to give you a full refund on that deposit. So there's absolutely no risk for you to try Cutco out today and make sure you love it as much as you think you're going to love it. So how's that sound? Why don't we uh, try it before we buy it? Why don't we date Cutco before we marry it? Why don't we make sure you're going to actually love Cutco in your kitchen? And if a customer's on the edge and they're, they're on the fence, like that's going to push them right over the fence and they're going to feel comfortable saying, you know what, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and try it out. A perfect example of this, I was working the fair and uh, had a wife there without her husband at the fair. And uh, her friend owned Cutco and was telling her like, this stuff's awesome, you should get it. And so closed her on the signature set. She wanted to say yes, but she called her husband. And I could tell the conversation didn't go well from just what I heard on my end of the conversation that the husband was like, you must be crazy if you're thinking about spending over $2,000 on knives. Um, so before she could say anything, when she got off the phone, I was like, hey, uh, can I make a suggestion? And she's like, sure. I was like, hey, instead of buying Cutco today, um, why don't we go ahead and put a deposit? It'll be about 400 bucks. We'll ship it to your house. So that way your husband can actually see Cutco, can actually try Cutco, can see why you want to purchase Cutco. And uh, if after you two use it together, he's not absolutely sold on it and doesn't absolutely love it. Uh, we'll take it back and refund that $400. So there's no risk for the two of you guys in trying it out together. She's like, oh, I can do that. Yeah, sweet. Let's do that. And so even though the husband said, no, don't purchase Cutco, instead of purchasing Cutco, we put a deposit down to try Cutco with her husband. So a lot of times the phrasing that you use with customers can be really key to make them feel comfortable uh, with trying Cutco instead of buying Cutco, dating the product before they marry it. Um, and, uh, something that's another, uh, kind of nugget that I used to like to try, or they used to like to say to customers, uh, is, you know, <clears throat> uh, Lucas 10 years from now, 
when you're still using your Cutco, not only will the sting of the money you spent today have been long forgotten, but you'll be thanking me for pushing you over the edge and helping you get your Cutco today. So Lucas, why don't we go ahead and try it out? Seems like you're going to love it. Seems like you're going to use it. You definitely deserve it. So why don't we just try it out today and you can make sure you're going to love it. Um, and then uh, one final thing on understanding human psychology is responding versus reacting to customers' responses or reactions. Um, and Jay always loves the story because he's heard it a lot of times. Uh, I don't think any of the rest of you guys have actually heard it, except maybe Brad Ramos. Um, but uh, I, I went to see uh, Rosie and Compton. Rosie and Compton. And uh, Rosie, when I'm doing the demo, uh, she brings out like some of her knives and she has a cleaver with the hammer marks on the back of it. Like she was trying to cleave some stuff and uh, clearly that knife was not working and she was just trying to force her way through with a hammer. <laughs> And, and, uh, so I was showing her the complete set and, uh, I, I got to the close and I was like, Hey, Rosie, uh, I wouldn't be doing my job today if I didn't ask you, uh, would you like to go ahead and try out the complete set today? Let me give you your entertainer pieces for free. And she, <laughs> she pretty much word for word said $2,000. I ain't spending $2,000 on no knives. You must be crazy. That's pretty much word for word what she said. And so respond versus react. Um, my response was, uh, Rosie, if, if I could say somebody was going to use all of the tools in our complete set, it's definitely you look at your cleaver. And besides, you don't have to spend $2,000 today. We'll split it up over five months for you. It's only 400 bucks today. How does that sound? And her word for word response was, all right, baby, you got me. And she bought the complete set after telling me she wasn't, I must be crazy for even asking her if she would want to get the complete set. But it's because I didn't react to her response to the price of the product or her response to what would be crazy to spend money on. I just responded and hit her with truth. Hey, I could definitely tell you're going to use all these tools. Reminded her of the five pay because Everybody remembers the big ticket price. Everybody forgets the five pay price, especially when they're reacting in such a way. Uh, and then just re-ask for the order uh, in a way that she could tell I definitely believed she would get benefit from owning the product and believe that she should go ahead and get the product. Uh, so responding versus reacting. Um, and then uh, finally, I'm going to give you guys a few uh, closing nuggets. And my wife says, since I woke her up uh, earlier than she wanted to get up for the fair, I have to make her breakfast. Uh, so I'm going to give you guys a few closing nuggets uh, and then uh, hop off and make some breakfast. Um, all right. So the three question uh, closing before dropping down. Three question closing before dropping down. Uh, so uh, NJ, uh, hey, thank you for letting me show you Cutco today. I just have a few questions uh, I'd like to ask you before we finish up. Uh, uh, NJ, you you like Cutco, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, great. And uh, if you had Cutco in your kitchen, you you would use it, right? Definitely. Uh, yeah. All right, great. So is it uh, mainly the money that's keeping you from getting it today? Yeah, I think, yeah, you know, 1419 is, is a lot. All right, awesome. Hey, great. Let me show you something that might make more sense for your budget. And uh, that might actually be the perfect set for you. It's called our galley set. So what that does or what it did for me is it made me super comfortable dropping down to the next set because I've established now that I'm dropping down for them because they like Cutco. And if they had it in their cut show, in their cut show, in their kitchen, they would use Cutco. And it's mainly just their uncomfortable level with the price that's keeping them from getting a homemaker. Um, of course, uh, my favorite uh, question, can I make a suggestion? Can I make a suggestion? Can I make a recommendation? Uh, or sometimes uh, when I wanted to really say something that, that they might feel a little bit uncomfortable with, I'd say, can I be blunt with you? Um, but a softer version of can I be blunt with you? Can I make a suggestion? Can I make a recommendation? Because uh, then it makes you feel comfortable making a suggestion to them or telling them something that, you know, reclosing essentially. So 
Uh, hey, Lucas, can I make a suggestion? Hey, it really seems like you love Cutco. I can really tell that if you had these in your kitchen, it would really benefit you. And uh, it seems like you're a little bit hesitant because you're not absolutely sure if you're going to love them. So here, here's my recommendation. Here's my suggestion. And then go into the reassurance deposit close. Hey, instead of buying Cutco today, let's put a deposit down of one fifth. We're going to ship the whole set out to you. You get to try them out for 15 days. Make sure you absolutely love them. If you don't have absolutely love them, we're going to take them back and refund that deposit for you anyway. So there's absolutely no risk in trying them out. So what do you say? Want to put the deposit down? Make sure you're going to love them. So can I make a suggestion? Um, and then uh, if they're going back and forth between two sets or two options, uh, it's a question to reconnect them to the long term versus the short term. So it's just like, hey, Eva, uh, over the next 30 to 40 years, which set do you think is going to benefit you in your kitchen the most? And then retying them into the long term versus the spending money today aspect of it. All right, guys. Well, great seeing all of you guys here today for Champs Club. Uh, go take those nuggets and implement them. Uh, it's it's always fun uh, when somebody sort of changes their perspective and really realizes what a big order is and what a small order is and closes their first combo order or closes their first huge wedding uh, set order uh, when they would have been a, happy with a gift set or a smaller starter set and they go and sell someone an ultimate set as a wedding gift. Uh, it's always awesome. So uh, I look forward to seeing most of you guys uh, tonight at the Alliance meeting.